Hi, I'm Jerry with Middle Loop, and this is part six in our Waypoint series. A deep dive on the Waypoint speed setting. Today, we dive deep into the speed settings of a Waypoint mission. And I have to tell you, the results were not what we expected. We'll be looking at global and custom settings, exactly when do they take effect, and what happens when you mix in the hover feature. We'll start out with a quick overview on how we tested the speed settings. Next, we'll run the mission multiple times, capturing the data and reviewing the results. And finally, at the end, we'll wrap it all up. A quick note to those who would like to help support our channel. At no cost to you, we've set up a website with links that you can use to purchase drones, controllers, micro SD cards, and other accessories. So, whenever you get ready to buy, using the links that we've provided will help us to continue to develop these videos. A link to the site just popped up above, which you'll also find in the description. You might want to bookmark it in your browser. We appreciate your support. Now, let's get started. We're assuming that you already know how to set up a Waypoint mission. If not, we recommend you check out Part 2 and Part 3 in our series on Waypoints. To test the speed settings, we created a mission with seven waypoints, all in a straight line set roughly 150 feet apart at a height of 200 feet, and we have the end of flight setting set to return to the first waypoint. We ran the mission eight times, each time making changes to the speed setting of one or more of the waypoints in order to test exactly when the speed changes. Most of the waypoints are set to the global speed, which we have set at 20 miles per hour. To change the speed at an individual waypoint, we used a custom speed of 10 miles per hour. On the last two runs, we mixed in a couple of one second hovers just to see what that would do. Now, each time we ran the mission, we hit the go button right about here so that we could test the speed of the drone when it hits that first waypoint. This is about 150 feet away at the same height. As we said, we ran the mission eight times. On the first run, we simply set all the waypoints to the global speed, which again is set to 20 miles per hour. Here's a chart of the mission that we created by downloading the flight log. The x-axis across the bottom is time, and the y-axis on the left is speed. Here's 10 miles per hour, 20 miles per hour, and 30. The green line is where we hit the go button. The orange lines are where each waypoint is set, and the red line is where the drone returned to the first waypoint. So right out of the gate on our first run of the mission, we got our first surprise. We expected that after hitting go, the drone would anticipate the first waypoint set at 20 miles per hour, and it would be at that speed by the time it reached it. Well, that's not at all what happens. After hitting go, there's a slight delay as the controller uploads the mission to the drone. Then it headed towards the first waypoint at about 10 miles per hour. And as it approached the first waypoint, it decelerates coming to a complete stop at the waypoint. What we found is that the mission doesn't actually start until it reaches the first waypoint, and it always starts at a dead stop. Upon starting the mission, it took about five seconds to get up to speed. First, overshooting the goal before settling down to the set speed of 20 miles per hour, where it stayed crossing the sixth waypoint. Then, as you can see, it totally ignored our last speed setting, gradually slowing to a complete stop at the last waypoint. Once the mission is complete, it executes the end of flight setting set to return to the first waypoint, which it does at the drone's top speed of around 30 miles per hour. Let's move on to the second run. Here we have all of the waypoints set to the global speed except number four, which is set to 10 miles per hour. As you can see, it starts out pretty much the same right through that number four waypoint. So the speed doesn't change until after it passes the waypoint set to 10 miles per hour and then it doesn't return to 20 miles per hour until it passes the next waypoint. Okay, run number three. Waypoints three and five are set to 10 miles per hour. Again, starting out pretty much the same as we've come to expect, getting up to speed and not dropping down until after the first 10 mile per hour waypoint. Then it gets back up to 20 after the fourth and drops back down to 10 after the fifth. Then after the sixth waypoint, it heads back up to 20 miles per hour, overshooting a bit, and immediately decelerates to a stop at the last waypoint. Run number four. Here we have waypoints two and six set to 10 miles per hour. This is kind of interesting. Instead of continually decelerating like before, it was able to hit the 10 mile per hour goal and maintain it briefly before slowing again. I suspect that if we had more distance between the last two waypoints, 
most of the time would be spent at the goal speed and it would only start to decelerate as it approaches the last waypoint. On to run number 5. Here we have 1 and 7 set to 10 miles per hour, and this is looking pretty consistent. It goes to the speed set after passing the waypoint, except the last waypoint which it totally ignores. Run number 6 has 1, 3, 5, and 7 set to 10 miles per hour, confirming the pattern as we now know it. Okay, run number 7 is where we add a 1 second hover on waypoint number 4, which is also set to a speed of 10 miles per hour. You can see it right here. Hover, as you might expect, causes the drone to sit still at 0 miles per hour. What I find interesting is that when we've only been setting the speed, it doesn't take effect until after the waypoint that it was set in. Like here in the fifth waypoint. It's set to 20 miles per hour, and it doesn't go to 20 until after it passes the waypoint. But in this case, where we added a hover, you can see how it affects the speed, decelerating as it approaches the waypoint. It seems to be acting exactly the same as it does going into the last waypoint. Then after the hover is over, it goes to the set speed, which in this case is 10 miles per hour. On our last run, number 8, we have two hovers, one at 3 and one at 5, both set at 10 miles per hour. Here are the hovers, and here again is where it decelerates before arriving to the waypoints. And remember how I said that it seems to be acting like it does going into the last waypoints? Check this out. These two are nearly identical. So to summarize, I feel like I've learned a lot. I've learned that regardless of the speed set, it always comes to a stop going into the first and last waypoints. So if you're shooting video and you want the drone to be moving through the entire mission, you should probably add an extra waypoint at the front and the back to accommodate. I've also learned not to even bother setting a speed setting at the last waypoint because it just ignores it, and that a hover starts to decelerate before getting to the waypoint where the hover is set. And finally, I've learned that after it comes to a complete stop at the end, if you have the end of flight setting to go back to the first waypoint, it does so at the drone's top speed. And that's it for this deep dive on the waypoint speed settings. If you found it useful, you know what to do. And if you'd like to support our channel, please use our product link website. Thank you, have a great day, and happy flying.